Hey friend, ever wondered why you're so tired all the time? Why you need that afternoon caffeine hit every day just to stay in the game? Hint, you probably need more sleep. So I created something just for you. It's my seven-day sleep makeover. I'll teach you the three steps you need to move from exhausted to energized so you can live out your brilliant dreams. Head to brilliantbalance.net forward slash sleep and start your sleep makeover today. You're going to love this. I'm Sherilyn Skolnicki, and this is Brilliant Balance, the show for working women who are ready to shine. Each week, I bring you ideas, inspiration, and insight on balance, business, and getting it all done gracefully. You ready? Let's be brilliant. This is episode 102 of the Brilliant Balance podcast, and today we're talking about what if your purpose won't pay the bills? Hello, everyone. It is good to be back in the chair recording the next podcast for you. And before I dig too far into today's topic, which is going to be such a good one, purpose is a hot topic in this community. And I'm going to get into a little bit about why I think that is, how it really connects to balance and connects to what we want most in this chapter of life. But before I dig too far into this, I wanted to share this story about uh, my goddaughter. I had brunch with her last weekend. We had um, her mom and dad, who are really good friends of ours, and this little girl, I won't say her name here, over. And so she's six years old, and she is just starting first grade. And, and you all know what a just awesome age that is, like delightfully fun, curious, bubbly age, interested in everything. And it was really fun because I was watching her with my youngest daughter, who is three years older. So Brooke is nine. And they were, Brooke wanted to show her this frog that she had caught. And I was not sure how this was going to go over because not every child is down with seeing a frog, right? So Brooke comes in with this frog and my goddaughter is delighted, like cannot wait to see the frog. So then Brooke gets emboldened to show her the snail collection that she's established. And my goddaughter shares back that this summer when they were overseas, her dad's a college professor, so they were overseas this summer, she had this snail collection in in their apartment. And then they found bugs and they were touching these bugs. And it was really delightful to watch these two share their mutual interest in all creatures great and small. I mean, we just we all kind of sat and watched them do it. And and my other two children, not so interested. Like they're, you know, tolerant of it, but not really they're not really turned on by this whole uh, outdoor adventure that the little two were having. And it made me think about how much of who we are and what we're interested in is set early on. And and one could argue that those interests, you know, the passions, the things that capture our imagination are the seeds of purpose. And somehow, if we get this equation right, they start to give us an inkling of what we actually feel called to do in the world. You know, so if you ask Brooke today what she wants to do, she'll tell you, I think I want to be a veterinarian. Now, that's a pretty linear connection, right, from a passion for animals for a nine-year-old child to say, I think I want to be a vet. And look, she may well be. I think it's a fabulous choice. But she hasn't really rounded out her perspective on all the other things that a passion for animals could become, right, and how that passion for animals could get translated into some form of purpose, But the truth is, I think a lot of adults haven't made that connection either. You know, a lot of us are still in sort of the linear, obvious connect between something we're interested in and how it might play out as a career or a profession. So today, I want to take that apart a little bit with you and and have a discussion about the pursuit of purpose and really the biggest reason that I see women in our community offer as why they're not able to pursue their purpose or even really why they're not able to claim it or define it. Okay. So before I get into the details of that, I want to set the stage for why is purpose such a hot topic among this generation of women at this time? 
I think honestly, it's because things are pretty good. If you look at a twist on Maslow's hierarchy of needs for us as women at midlife, big jobs, raising kids, which is really where most of this audience lives, you know, we have, I think, a three part hierarchy of needs. The first thing that some of us are trying to nail down is how to get enough energy to get through the day. Like we're just so flipping tired that we're trying to figure out how do I get more energy to bring into my life so I'm not just run down all the time. And you've heard me say, we have a new giveaway for you that is a seven-day sleep makeover. And that is exactly why, because this is a dominant massive problem. It's like a bottom of the pyramid problem, right, for this generation. If we don't solve that, if we don't figure out how to get all of ourselves energized and alive and like able to bring the full force of our being to our lives, we're never going to be the women that we can be. So that's, that's the sort of energy piece of the puzzle. Once we get that nailed down, the next problem that surfaces is how am I going to get everything done? You know, it's this chronic belief that I don't have enough time. My day is really jammed. I'm running from activity to activity. And so I call that productivity, right? You could use lots of different words for it, but that's like the second level problem. When you're energized, then you earn the right to start thinking about productivity. And then after that is really the first time you can even think about purpose. It's it's sort of correlated loosely to in Maslow's hierarchy, it's correlated to self-actualization, right? So that was the, if you remember that from school, it's the top of the pyramid. And in our case, purpose or the, the chance to do what we want to do in the world, to do what we feel called to do is to some extent a privilege, right? It implies that we've met some of the other, we've solved some of the other problems that sit beneath that. And so I think the reason it's such a hot topic is because we're, you know, Even if you haven't fully solved your energy problems or you haven't fully figured out productivity, there may be more of a cognitive belief that you can, like that that is in fact a solvable problem, but this purpose stuff feels kind of elusive, okay? So that's why we're going to talk about this today because it comes up so often inside of our membership community. So like the Brilliant Balance Facebook group is a place where this dialogue comes up a lot. And then inside of our client community, all of the women that that I am coaching and that our, our team is coaching, it comes up a ton. We talk about it all the time because so many of those women are what I refer to as purpose seekers, right? They're really on a quest to figure out what are they here to do in the world? What is the mark that they want to make? And one of the biggest blocks that comes up when they're trying to figure that out is, what if I can't make enough money, right? Often they're in a reasonably lucrative job or a very lucrative job, and they're starting to look at, are there trade-offs here? Are there big consequences or big costs of of doing purpose-driven work, all right? So that sets the stage a bit for what I want to get into today. So the first point I want to make here, and I have... I think I have five big points today that I want to make sure we get into. Four. (laughs) I said five, but it's four. So first thing is purpose is really not the same thing as an interest or a hobby, okay, or a passion. Purpose is not the same thing as a hobby. This isn't really a discussion about getting to do something you think is really fun all day long and trying to monetize that. So, you know, maybe you love to bake cupcakes and you're tr- and you're sitting in there saying like I love to bake cupcakes, but I don't know that I could make as much money as I make as a partner in a law firm by baking cupcakes, right? Or maybe you're like I really love to garden or I really love to scrapbook or I really love to hike and you're saying like I love these things and I can't figure out how I would make a living doing that. All of those things we just mentioned, and we could have an infinite list, right, of interests or hobbies or passion points, is those are interests. They're things that you like being around or that you like doing, but they're not necessarily purpose. Purpose, second point, is really about contribution to others, right? Your purpose is what are you here to do? 
And it's it's almost always, in my experience, about solving a problem um, or easing someone's suffering. And, and, and we can take that term very literally or we can use it loosely, metaphorically, right? Or making someone's life better, like going from good to great. So the seeds of purpose are almost always about that. There's a problem that you see in the world or some population of people that you care about is suffering or they really have this problem in a, in a meaningful way. Um, or you can see an opportunity to improve the lives of some segment of the population. And let's just go back to my daughter and my goddaughter for a second. The population, quote unquote here, could be animals, right? There, there's no rule that says this has to be about a particular um, set of people, but it often is. If you, I will tell you, if I ask women, tell me what you want to do in the world, tell me about what you think your purpose is, the answer I get the most often is I want to help people. So I think at our core, most of us have a call to be of service, and that's where purpose is really rooted in that. It's rooted in answering that call to serve. So when you're starting to think about what is my purpose, it is probably going to be defined as a problem that you are committed to devoting your life to solving, right? Maybe solving regularly in the world in small ways, maybe solving once, you know, with a big flash of insight, um, or easing suffering or making someone's life better. So this can be about cupcakes or knitting or gardening, right? It can connect to your passion, but it's not necessarily the same thing. And there are, you know, I I really believe virtually anything can be turned into a purpose as long as it's for good, right? Virtually anything. There's like no problem too small or seemingly insignificant because if someone has it and you can fix it, that counts as purpose. So that's the second point is purpose is about contribution to others, right? One, it's not the same thing as an interest or a hobby, just kind of a line in the sand. And the difference is it's about contribution to others. The third point I want to make here is, and this like blows people's minds sometimes, but I, I, I know this to be true to my core. There is always, always more than one way to live out your purpose. There's no exactly right forever answer. So purpose is dynamic. And I think we have a false belief that there's this needle in a haystack waiting for us. you know. And when we find it, it's like we're going to raise our arm in the air and say, aha, this is it. This is what I've been searching high and low for. This particular opportunity is my purpose. I don't think so. I think what we're going to find is a collection of ideas, a collection of opportunities that could be expressions of our purpose. And I'm going to give you some examples of this in a minute, right? In my own life and in the the women that I coach, there's just no what I would call exactly right forever (laughs) answer. You know, you're going to get an answer that's good for right now or that's exactly right for right now. And if you give yourself the opportunity for that to evolve and develop and shift over time, there's great freedom in that. So that's the third point, always more than one way to live out your purpose. And then the fourth is, and I believe this is really what a lot of us are saying, the more of your time and effort that is devoted to your purpose, the better. Okay? So I think about this like Venn diagrams. And there's sort of three structures that this could be drawn as in a Venn diagram format. The first is that your job is your purpose, right? Your whole life, your whole professional life is an expression of your purpose. That's where the circles would sit on top of each other, right? Everything about your job is an opportunity to express your purpose. You know, your purpose is fully expressed through what you do in your job. That is like the best case scenario. That is the dream scenario is that everything about the work you choose to do in the world and the way you make a living is rooted in purpose. And I think that's rare. It is probably the most sought after state and it is also probably the most rare. Okay, 
But that is where everything you do is an embodiment of your purpose at work. Hey friend, ever wondered why you're so tired all the time? Why you need that afternoon caffeine hit every day just to stay in the game? Hint, you probably need more sleep. So I created something just for you. It's my seven day sleep makeover. I'll teach you the three steps you need to move from exhausted to energized so you can live out your brilliant dreams. Head to brilliantbalance.net forward slash sleep and start your sleep makeover today. You're going to love this. Second Venn diagram would be that the circles overlap, but not completely. So your job helps you live out your purpose, but there's some parts of your job that really aren't connected to your particular purpose. And there's some parts of your purpose that are really not served by your job. Okay, so the circles overlap. There is a good, and the degree of overlap can vary. So when I think back to my corporate life, right, when I was working in marketing for a big company, I was in an overlapping circles model. Today, I would say I'm one of those people whose the circles directly sit on top of each other. In my corporate life, they overlapped. And here's how I ran a team. You know, I was a mentor to people, I was a leader in women's networks. All of those things that were about helping people achieve their full potential gave me opportunities to express my purpose. But there were also lots of things like analytics and creative work for you know, brands that didn't necessarily resonate with me and financial reports that had to be done and you know, meetings that I had to sit in that were not expressions of my purpose. So there was enough good in there to keep me really satisfied. And candidly, my purpose at that time was just coming into focus for me. I don't don't think I could have sat there at the inception of my corporate life and, and stated my purpose. It certainly wouldn't have been the same as it is today. So there was an evolution. And I think being in that role and really analyzing my experience in, in those roles in a big corporation allowed me to really say, well, what parts of this job do I love the most? How can I put more of my energetic focus toward them? What parts of my job do I love the least or feel the least called to do or equipped to do or excited about doing? And how can I start making shifts over time so that there's less of that? And, you know, Many times you can navigate to a role inside your company that is a better expression of your purpose, better aligned with your purpose. So again, if you think about this Venn diagram model, if you don't have perfect overlap, the second option is you can have some overlap. And there can be deep satisfaction for a long time in that arena, okay? Because some of your life outside of work can also be an expression of your purpose. The third way the Venn diagram can be drawn is the circles don't touch in any obvious way, right? They're two separate circles. One is your job. It's how you make your living. The other is the things you do to express your purpose. And those collection of activities have no overlap, okay? There's no – so if you put me – I'll make this up – in a factory and I was assembling, you know, pieces of machinery on an assembly line and that was my job and I did not – connect with other people or talk with other people and I didn't have a chance to study and learn and I I wasn't running a team so I wasn't coaching anybody that job for me would have zero overlap with my purpose which is about you know helping every woman I meet stand in her brilliance and achieve her full potential there just wouldn't be overlap in those two things so I would probably be really unhappy in that job because my my soul would be telling me, right, there's misalignment here between what you're meant to do and what the vast majority of your time is doing, okay? So the goal is when we say, I want to do purpose-driven work, is probably to get those circles on top of each other as much as possible. Now, here's where the rubber meets the road, okay? Because we started this episode saying, what do you do if your purpose doesn't pay the bills, right? If you don't feel like you can make a living doing work that's aligned with your purpose. What do you do? So that's there's a there's a pathway here that I want to share with you that may really open up some possibilities for you in different ways, okay? What I would say is if if that is your belief, 
It is possible that you are thinking about an interest or a hobby instead of a purpose statement. So let's let's say, for example, you your interest, your hobby, your passion is music. And people have told you, like, well, you don't want to be a starving artist, right? And, and you can't make a living playing music. Well, what if your purpose is defined a little more broadly as spreading great music into the world, right? Your purpose is to bring music into the world. That gives you a chance to start looking at, okay, what are all the ways that you could bring music into the world? And let's just list a few, right? You could be the artist. You could perform music. You're a singer. You're a musician. And that is probably back earlier when I was talking about Brooke wanting to be a veterinarian because she loves animals. That's like the linear expression, right? I'm going to, I'm going to be a performer because I love music. Other ideas, though, if you start to map this of how else could you bring great music into the world, you could be a music teacher who teaches other musicians. So you're around music all day. It's your hobby. It's your passion. And you're also equipping future musicians to go and bring music into the world. Okay, that's another example. You could be an agent for artists. So a completely business bent on how you could still be connected to the purpose of bringing great music into the world, but doing it as an agent. You could be a producer. You could be a venue manager, right? You could own or manage a venue where musicians come and play, like a club, right? Or a concert venue. Um, You could own a store that sells musical instruments or albums or, you know, like, Any of those things are about bringing music into the world. You could creatively change the way music is delivered in the world. Like, For example, the person who founded Spotify or the person who founded Pandora or or the way we got the iPod to carry music around in our pocket, all of those could be connected. They could be expressions of the purpose of bringing music into the world. You could be a DJ. You could be a church organist, right? You could be someone who organizes concerts or festivals where music is played, right, for people. So how long could we go on down this list of ways that that purpose, every single one of those jobs, quote unquote jobs, the person in them could say, I claim the purpose of bringing fantastic music into the world. That is what I wake up every day excited about doing. Every one of them could stand in the confidence that they are doing that with these roles we're talked about, but their day-to-day life looks totally different. The amount of money they make, totally different, okay? So my point is you don't have to only choose the linear path, and I think it's that false belief that causes us to think, well, I can't possibly make a living being connected to this purpose. Now, you can always still be a purist as a hobby. So if all of this started because you love to play music, and that's why you were thinking about being a performer, think about those Venn diagrams. You still can play music to your heart's content. It just may not be the exact way that you monetize your purpose, right? It may not be the way you get paid for living out your purpose. There may always be a very pure part of your purpose that you do just for the joy of doing it, okay? I hope those examples are helpful to you. I, I, I want you to be able to really paint a picture in your mind of where am I being too limiting, too linear, right? How am I ending up potentially in a situation where you know I have connected the dots in one and only one way and declared that it's not possible for me to make a living doing this, okay? Because there, are, the, the creative boundaries of this are limitless. There are so many ways that you can ladder this in different directions, and then over time, how you can become more and more traditionally successful in the pursuit of this purpose. And I think about, you know, one of my interests or hobbies is that I love to cook. I love, you've heard, probably heard me say this before, if you're a podcast listener. I I love to cook. I love to be around all things food. I like to shop for it. I like to eat it. I and I I really thoroughly enjoy being in the kitchen. So an obvious linear connection for me at one point in my life was to think about being a chef, 
right? Or owning a restaurant. Those were like the two things I kept coming back to. But what if the purpose were to, you know, to get more people cooking and eating well? So in my first business, that was the purpose I thought I was going to pursue, is how can I get more people in the world cooking and more people in the world eating well consistently? Okay, so if that were someone's stated purpose, you could go and be a chef in a restaurant or you could be a personal chef, right, and have a smaller expression of purpose but a really deep impact with a smaller collection of families. Here are other things you could do, though. You could open a homeless shelter so that people who have nothing to eat are able to eat something. You could work at a store like Whole Foods or, you know, in the Midwest, we have Kroger. You could work at Fresh Market, like someplace where you are educating people about the power of eating well and you are encouraging them to cook by creating an environment where there's a great selection of food for them to buy. In this digital economy, you could make cooking videos and post them online so people could learn from you how to cook or eat well. You could teach an online course about cooking where people could buy the course and learn step-by-step how to cook at home. You could be a teacher in a cooking school. You could host cooking nights you know, in your home where people come over and, and they learn how to cook and they it's a hands-on experience. Or... On the totally other end of the spectrum, you could found a company that goes on to become something like Blue Apron, right? Or Plated or HelloFresh, like massive companies, massive impact in the world, um, massive income for the founders because they took that idea and, and looked at what does it look like to play really big in that arena, okay? So I want you to look at the spectrum because when you start thinking like, well, I love to cook, but what am I going to do? you know, bake cupcakes in my kitchen and that's how I'm going to cook and and really I'm not going to make any money doing that. Well, somebody with that idea, it ultimately led to some of these giant companies like Whole Foods and Blue Apron and big restaurant chains because their idea was, I am going to follow those seeds of purpose and have it play out in a really big way. Okay. So when your first cut in looking at your purpose says, I just can't make enough money doing that, The first thing I want you to challenge yourself in is, am I really talking about purpose or am I talking about an interest or a hobby that I want to play all day at doing, okay? Because if you're at the level that you're thinking about an interest or a hobby, you need to go one level up and really think about how can I stay in the realm of that interest but make it about a contribution to others. That's where it becomes purpose. Okay. And then the third thing is remember, there is always, always more than one way to live out your purpose. And there's no exactly right forever answer. It can change over time very beautifully as you change over time. And then the fourth point is the more of your time and effort holistically that is devoted to your purpose, the better. So the more those Venn diagrams overlap, the more the circles overlap, the happier you're probably going to be right? The more of your activities in your day that are connected to what you really care about, the change you're really trying to evoke, the better. So if you want to make a living through your purpose, if you want to have a purpose-driven chapter in your career, you're probably going to have to get creative. And that can be an extremely exciting opportunity. And you know, if you want help doing that, it is exactly what we do. We do this with women every day inside of our program. So Super easy to find us and get in touch about that if you want some help. But exploring purpose and how it can lead to the next chapter in your life is such exciting territory, and it's a privilege. You know, it goes back to what I said at the beginning. It's if if that's really where you are, it means a lot of this other stuff is probably squared away, and you're feeling freedom to explore what's possible. And there's nothing more exciting to me than somebody who's ready to go on that journey. Okay. I'll tell you what's not exciting to me. If that's exciting, what is not exciting to me is comparison traps. So the next time on the podcast, we are talking about comparison traps and how to get out of them because, man, are they destructive. So we're going to talk about a couple different times, types of comparison traps next week, 
um, and the very worst one of all. And I am definitely going to share some strategies to help you get out of them if you find that you're falling into them over and over again. So till then, here's a couple things for you to do. First of all, come join us in the Brilliant Balance Facebook group. I can't emphasize this enough. This is where you are going to find your tribe, right? Other women like you on a quest for purpose, trying to have it all and manage it brilliantly. So search Facebook groups for Brilliant Balance. We'll get you welcomed in there. Tell your friends who you think belong in that group. Tell them about it so they can join you too. And um, we look forward to seeing you there. We're doing a lot of cool bonus content inside of that group. So it's a great place to come and get more if you love the podcast. And if you love the podcast, please share this with a friend. It's so powerful to us when you take an episode and just put it in the hands of somebody that you think it will matter to. Um, It's such a personal gift to just say, I want you to listen to this. I think it will make a difference. And I'm, I'm always so grateful when one of you takes the time to do that. So that's it for today. Till next time, my friends, let's be brilliant. This is the podcastfactory.com.